Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. I'm Stefan Sylvester. And I'm Todd Sylvester. And we're switching things up. And I don't care. <laughs> Because I'm so tired coming back from Cove Crest. Have you gotten care less? I mean, have you? Is that a thing where you can take naps to catch up from sleep that you missed, or no, does that not work for you? I think you have to get. I mean, you just synced. But last night was an adoration night for me. Oh right. So, so oh my gosh, why know, would you do that? I'm double zonked. You didn't get a person to cover it for you. That's crazy. I got a person. Philip covered it for me the night before we left because okay. we were leaving at 5 a.m. on that Monday right. last week. But I was perfectly fine to go last night. Okay, Mom Fair. was awesome. Sunday, I was planning on when you guys left to go out and weed whack and, and do a couple things, maybe mm -hmm. start on some of the fascia boards. You know, we're still working on the house. And Mom's like, you know, let's just go back into our room and watch something. That sounds awesome. And I was like, yes. Yes, <laughs> I love you so much. Like, you are the perfect. You woman. are the perfect wife. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Which, by the way, when we're recording this, is the the day before we y'all's anniversary. Thirty one years. Yeah, thirty one years. Dude, look at y'all. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It really, it really is, and it feels great because I'm just so grateful that she's still around. I love it. So, speaking of awesome things, okay. Is there in your life a particular book that has had a profound impact on you? Because I was thinking about this when, when I sent you the topic. Sorry. I was thinking about this when I sent you the topic because I'm like, everybody talks about movies or music or other forms of media that has profoundly impacted them. Right. But I guess people just don't read books as much anymore, which you would never know because books still sell. Mm -hmm. But maybe they're just not as profound. I don't know. I'm curious to hear. Well, I should say the Bible. Well, obviously, I think I think we should we should be clear. We're talking about books that you read for fun. Well, sometimes I read the Bible for fun. And me, too. You know, I, I chuckled. Uh, we took the kids to mass today. And it's that reading where Moses is talking about dealing with the fact that the people are unhappy with the manna. And yeah. he goes, can you do me a favor, please? God, just, and just kill, kill me. me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I I had to hold back from busting out laughing because because I looked around and I was like, all right, no one else is laughing. So either no one else is listening or they don't realize how funny this is because yeah. I was like, it humanizes Moses so much. It does. So the in fairness, is great. yes, yes, I do read the Bible for fun sometimes. Yeah. It's hysterical. And but I think let's go beyond that because everyone would expect that answer yeah 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 so and, the and bible is so rich it's, you it's an incredibly you read it your historical whole significance spiritual you're significance. always going to get something out of it it's like we get it so it's the incredible. bible the bible's a given so beyond that beyond what's the that book that's had a really profound effect on can me? i say two sure and and we'll go I've back only, and forth i've only got one so i'll let you go okay one was when I went down to discern the Franciscans in the South Bronx and they had an, an afternoon where I wasn't doing any physical labor. So they sent me into the library and they said, just pick a book mm -hmm. and just spend some time in spiritual reading. Yeah. Because they were like, well, did you bring some books for spiritual reading? I'm like, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't told <laughs> Whoops. to do that. Sorry, guys. Sorry. My bad. Can I have a Bible? My bead, bro. <laughs> Look, I'm going <laughs> to throw my mullet over my shoulder <laughs> shut up you punk <laughs> so i go into the library and it's vast i mean i'm looking around yeah. going all right now what do i do uh just close your eyes and play grab a book roulette but i i walked around for a little bit and i don't think i even said oh holy spirit guide me i there was just a book that in my eyes jumped out at me and it was called a man for others oh you've told him yeah you told me about this yeah before. it was a book yeah. about uh, St. Maximilian Colby. Yes. And it was the first time. It, first of all, it was nice because it, was, it wasn't it was hugely thick. Yeah. And I was like, okay, and I'm reading it. And it was just the first time that I saw photographs of a canonized saint. That's cool. Because I've always seen paintings and statues mm -hmm. and stained glass and icons. But these were photographs. And they were very human photographs. Mm -hmm. Like there was one photo that it had him hanging out with firemen who had obviously been fighting a fire very soon, you know, before that photo was taken, because they all looked sweaty and smoke 
charred <laughs> you know, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he's just sitting there and they're all like drinking coffee. That's cool. And I was like, wow. It just felt very human. Yeah. It's and like speaking- saint- sainthood kind of felt achievable at that point. In time. Yeah. It's like speaking of humanizing people. That's a very, very real thing. Yeah. Um, What's your book? Well, I was going to say a work of fiction, but you mentioning that reading about a saint made me think of the first book about a saint that I ever read. Okay. And it was the one that made me decide to choose this person as my confirmation saint. It was that, I, I forget if it's, uh, one of those Catholic publishing companies puts this out, but they do these, uh, they're not illustrated, and they're about 150, 200 pages, they're not long, but they're little biographies of saints. And I read the one about St. John Vianney. And I think I remember... At the time, I picked it because I was like, oh, Vienna, that's a cool word. You know? And that was <laughs> the extent of my interest or knowledge about any spiritual nice. stuff at that point. So I picked it up, and I couldn't put it down. It was a really cool story. And I remember at the time thinking, there's no way that all this is real. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Because he had such a profound spiritual life. But at the same time, he was also just a dude from his part of France. And he was relatively very normal. Wow. He had profound holiness and he had a pious way of living, but otherwise he was just a normal guy. Yeah. And it, it was the fact that he was so normal and he was even surprised by a lot of the miraculous things that were taking place around him initially that drew me to the story. That's beautiful. That's good stuff. All yeah. right. Well, what's the work of fiction, though? Well, I, it's always Ender's Game for me. Really? Yeah. Now, what is it about it? Well, it's a couple of things. So first of all, I love the way that Orson Scott Card writes. And if I ever get a chance to meet him, I'm going to tell him in person. I love the way that he writes. And he describes it because he gives classes all the time out in Mormon land. And he um, says that he reads out loud everything that he's put in a manuscript before he starts to edit it. Mm. And that has stuck with me because there's, there's a certain wisdom to that because if you can say it out loud if you can speak it it doesn't necessarily have to sound like a screenplay like for a movie or or a a a stage play but it helps you to hear what things could fit together better Mm -hmm. and you wouldn't know that unless you said it out loud right and i remember hearing him say that and i go you know i've read the book it makes sense when i'm reading it the cadence in my head sounds a lot closer to a human voice than any other sci-fi book that i've ever read that's cool yeah and it was that, so it was the fact that it was so well written, but it was also the fact that the characters were so well developed and believable. And it was the first time I read a book where I thought, this is something that's really, really creative, and it's actually a work of art versus just a story that someone fleshed out. How old were you when you first read oh, it? Oh, I was probably 16, 15 or 16. And I've gone back to it as an adult several times with years in between. And yeah. each time I, I see something new and I go, wow. Yeah. Now, granted, it's not as profound to read it now because it's just a sci-fi novel. But at the same time, it's a really, really good sci-fi novel. Yeah. Mom is inside right now reading a book that she's read no less than a dozen times. I love it. She always goes back to it. She'll read, you know, maybe five or six books, and then she goes back to the same book. What's this one? It's called Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Oh, I know that one. Yeah. She yep. just continually goes back to it. Yep. Yeah. But the... Probably the book, I mean, Man for Others was fantastic, but it was more of the photographs in it mm-hmm. that touched me. If we're really talking about the the actual words and the writing, then it was a book for me called The Way of the Pilgrim. And it is translated from uh, an anonymous Russian uh, writer. They don't know who wrote it? No. No, they don't. Wow, the way of the pilgrim, and it t- and it was it introduced me to what is called the Jesus Prayer, because he talks about how it had an effect on on him. He had these spiritual, you know, fathers, spiritual directors, whatever that taught him the Jesus Prayer. The long version of it is, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh yeah. But I do the shortened version, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, and he's he uses that to try to pray ceaselessly. He breathes in with Lord Jesus Christ, and he breathes out, have mercy on me. That's cool. And I got so intent on it that I would go to bed, and I still go to bed praying that prayer, but this doesn't normally happen. But there have been times in my life where I woke up praying it. Wow. And I thought, oh, my. 
I think I was praying that all night long, and that's trippy. That is very trippy. You know, just your subconscious starts doing it because you yeah. breathe in, Lord Jesus that pray Christ. Ceaselessly thing. You breathe out. That's cool. Have mercy on me. That is very the cool. The way of the pilgrim. I'm going to have to check that one out. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. In the comments, let us know what book has had a profound effect on you, spiritual or otherwise. Or sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me, your heathen son, choosing a sci-fi novel that's what had a profound effect. That? I don't know. There's nothing wrong with you that. You made it sound like there was something wrong no! with it. No. No, I love sci-fi. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to Potter Familias. See you all next time.